You are far more talented than you give yourself credit for. Be faithful in what you have been given, and God will bless you with more. But be unfaithful in what you have been given, and God will take it away. May we who are asked to give an accounting of our talents be found faithful. Good morning. Good morning. Just got a few announcements this morning. First, uh, our famous charge conference forms. They're coming in nicely. We still have a few more to fill out. I am getting thoroughly confused with the two churches on whose forms came in, whose forms on. We'll straighten that out. The challenge of uh, pastoring two churches. Also, Bible study starts this Tuesday. I will be sending out a link for Bible study. It will be 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. So I'll send out one link and it will be good for all day. You can join either or whenever your availability is. Also, we are still forming the Young Adults um, Bible Study. That will either be on a Wednesday night or a Thursday night. We're not sure yet. Whichever night that is, it will be our the opposite night will be the night for the prayer group. My schedule is getting busy. But we do, I do plan on having a good prayer group here. And eventually, maybe, we can find some place to have a prayer room. Wouldn't that be nice? I'd like to have a prayer room in here. So I'm sure some of our creative people can join in with me on that. I think that's it for the announcements. So we'll have a uh, worship committee meeting soon. I'll be calling that, and I'll work out a time with you, Allison, on that. We have some few things that have to be discussed as the holidays approach quickly. There's also choir rehearsal this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, I put the music uh, on the table out here. The three upcoming songs that we'll look at, um, and then also the following Thursday we'll have a choir rehearsal as well here here at Southern Mall. There's also the admin council tomorrow evening. That's right. See, too many meetings between this one and Otterbein. My schedule this week is filled. Trustees meeting too. Yeah. Trustees meeting. If, if you want one. Ad council meeting. Any other meetings going on this week that I forgot about? No. You're about tomorrow. That's not church. Okay, now we'll do our opening praise. Thank you. 
God not in Zion? Is there no ruler to lead us? Search for the Lord, for God waits for him in his expectancy. Is there no bond in Gilead? Is there no healer to help us? Cry out to the Lord, for God hears our pleas. Is there no hope left to be found? Is there nowhere to turn? Place your trust in the Lord, whose compassion comes speedily to meet us. Come, worship the one who hears our pleas.
we are not saved. For the hurt of my people I am hurt. I mourn, and this dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, my head were a spring of water, and my eyes are bound with tears, so that I may weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. versus profit. 
there was a certain rich man who had a manager handling all his affairs. One day a report came to the manager that he was this manager was wasting his employer's money. Mm. So the employer called him to, to the side and said, what is this I hear about him? Get your report in order because you're going to be fired. The manager thought to himself, now what? What am I going to do? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches. And I'm too proud to beg. Ah, oh, he says, I know how to ensure that I have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I'm fired. international version of that chapter. Now I want to read to you so we can compare translations and see the differences in the translations. I'm going to read to you from the Living Bible. Jesus now told this story to his disciples. A rich man hired an accountant to handle his affairs. But soon a rumor went around that the accountant was thoroughly dishonest. So his employer called him in and said, what is this I hear about you stealing from me? Get your report in order, for you are going to be dismissed. The accountant thought to himself, now what? I'm through here, and I haven't the strength to go out and get ditches, and I'm too proud to bed. I know just the thing, and then I'll have plenty of friends to take care of me when I leave. Do you see the difference between the two trans translations in that part? That's why I encourage people to read more than one translation. You get different meanings from different... See, humans write the Bible. We translate the Bible. And everybody translates it in a different way. So it's good to read more than one translation so that we get, don't uh, get really confused, but we understand the message. An absentee landowner buys land cheaply from a death burden farmers. Then the farmers begin to work as the hired hands. The manager has great attitude. He was more than generous towards the tenant farmers than the owner wanted. Did he run up huge, huge expenses for the boss? Was he spending the boss's money for himself? The manager's next scheme was selfish motives. His other options were manual labor or begging. So what did he do? In, chapter, in verse 5 it says, he, So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, How much do you owe him? And the man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. So the manager told him, Take that bill quickly and change it to 400 gallons. And how much do you owe my employer, he asked the next man. I owe him a thousand bushels of wheat. So the manager said, take that bill and change it to 800 bushels. That is what it says in the New International Version. Again, I want to look at the Living Bible. So he invited each one who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? My debt is 850 gallons of olive oil. Take note how that number has changed from one translation to the other. So he was told, 
look at the new revised standard version, it quotes 100 gallons of olive oil was owed. So do we really know how much oil was owed? So the manager asked the next man, how much do you owe him? A thousand bushels of wheat was the reply. Take your note, replace it with one, with one that says only 800 bushels. So the manager made arrangements to forgive his boss's debts. Debtors, he must have had the authority, don't you think he had the authority to change that? Do you? I don't think he had that authority. I don't think his manager or his boss knew what the manager was doing. The manager was taking what was owed to the owner and turning it around to suit what he needed. And what he needed was friends that ensured when he got lost his job, he wouldn't have to work. He would have people to give him things. He would have a place to live. Is this honest? Or is it dishonest? Did the owner cheat the people in the first place? May have. I don't know. Was it too much to ask for who knows how many gallons of olive oil? That's a lot of olive oil, isn't it? 800 gallons? What would you do with 800 gallons of olive oil? Big salad. Big salad, yeah. <laughs> but you see the shrewdness here. You see what's going on, how the money is tainted. It was not physical money, but it was barter system. We're told you're going to give 800 gallons of oil was like money equal to money. But throughout the whole Bible passage, you hear a thousand <coughs> bushels of wheat. That's a lot of wheat. That seems like an awful amount to have to pay to work the land. You wonder what was left for, for the person who's doing the work, the farmer. What was left for him? Was it honest the way they were doing his business? The manager now has grateful friends because he, he relieves some of the debt. But you make up your mind, is that just or unjust? Were his motives also to benefit those who cheated? Who were the ones that were cheating in this situation? The manager. And who benefited? The manager. He found a way of getting money without working. Would we all like to do that if it was honest? We've all heard it said, an honest works equals an honest works pay. This was not honest work. But when you're truly, a debt is forgiven for you, it's a great blessing. Worldly wise and righteous fools, that's what we learn in verse 8. And again, I'm going to read from different Bible <clears throat> translations so that we can see the differences and we can hear the difference. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rash, rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. The Living Bible states, the rich man had to admire the rascal for being true. And it is true that citizens of this world are more clever in dishonesty than the godly are. Just reading those two trans 
translations, the New <coughs> International Version and the Living Bible, do you see the clearer message being given in that? One, not everybody is going to know who the children of the light are, but the Living Bible spells it out there right for us. The children of the light are the children that are godly. Jesus is praising those, is Jesus praising those who misuse money? Ought Christians use even the corrupt resources of this world for any possible good they can? Let's think about that. How can we use the corrupt money of this world for good heavenly purposes? Can we not help the needy? If somebody wins a million dollars in the lottery, what is the lottery? Lottery is gambling. Does Jesus like gambling? No. But we can take those earnings from the lottery make it for good use. Make it to use for heavenly purposes to help God's people. That's what it's talking about here. Can a loving and trusting church be foolish with money? Yes, they can be. Some churches can leave the sight of money overtake their thought of doing what God wants them to do. We here at Evansburg try to do the best we can with the money that comes in because we love God's building. We don't take the money and keep it for ourselves. We don't take the money in our pockets for our own use. We take the money and use it for heavenly purposes. Are all in this world's teaching about money evil? Is Jesus saying to use money in a manner similar to dishonest rascals? but for eternal and godly purposes. If we ask the debtor to take and reduce his 800 gallons of olive oil to 400 gallons, that 400 gallons, if you take that and use it for heavenly purposes to help the needy, to help God's world, that's not dishonest. What was dishonest was this manager putting that into his pocket so that he would have and he ensured the good for himself. Dirty money in verse 9. Here's the lesson, <clears throat> New International Version. Use your worldly resources to benefit others, and then make friends. So when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. The Living Bible Translation. But shall I tell you to act that way? To buy friendship through cheating? Will this ensure your entry into an everlasting home in heaven? Take note how the Living Bible questions you. <coughs> See, parables leave room for a hearty conversation, deep thought, and different opinions. And I believe different opinions are healthy. It's good to have a good, healthy conversation that puts us deep in thought. That's why we do Bible study. You can have four people read the same verse and get four different 
meaning stuff. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we look at more than one translation. Jesus challenges us to think about the wise use of money. The wise use of money to benefit others. A church once returned an offering if they saw it was dirty money. But all money is corrupt. All money is corrupt in some way. That church that returned an offering because they saw it as dirty money was actually a lottery winning that they returned. But Jesus' instructions were, were quite the opposite. He said to use unrighteous mammon. Yes, mammon is also another word for money. He said to use unrighteous mammon to make eternal friends. And that's what we need to do as a church. Take the dirty money and make it good for heavenly purposes. Faithful with little. That is verses 10 through 12. If you are faithful with little things, you will be faithful with large ones. But if you are dishonest with little things, you won't be dishonest with greater responsibilities. And if you are trust, untrustworthy with worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? The New International Version. The Living Bible Version. No. For unless you are honest with small matters, you won't be in large ones. If you cheat even a little, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's money, why should you be entrusted with money of your own? Again, see the difference? Many people are untrustworthy, finding immoral but legal ways to misuse money. The money we have is a loan from God. Even a trillionaire on this earth has little as compared to owning the whole universe. Can God trust us with money? He loved us just a little temporarily. How faithful to God are we going to be with what little he gave us? In the last verse that we read today, it talks about serving two masters. In the New and International Version, it says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. The Living Bible is translated, says, For neither you nor anyone else can serve two masters. You will hate one and show loyalty to the other, or else the other way around. You will be enthusiastic about one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So the question here is, does money master us, or do we master money? Think about that this week. Does money master us, or do we master money? We need money to live. What can you do today without money? Pray. Ask God to be with you. But God will supply some of that dirty money to you. So 
so you can live. In ancient Israel, a wealth was spread equally in a planned system to minimize poverty. Using a seven-year and a 50-year redistribution, it's called the Jubilee system, prevented some abuses of wealth. But can we master the money and bring small jubilees to the poor? Do we serve only God and yet use money shrewdly? And in closing, I like to say wealth is dangerous and deceptive. We are all honest and fair. What is a righteous price? What is a righteous day's work for a righteous day's pay? Wealth blinds us to the suffering of others and our own sin. We deceive ourselves that wealth is forever. Even ownership is fiction. We borrow from God what others will possess one day. We can avoid the danger and deception of wealth by using it for eternal purposes. Yes, people, for as many funerals as I have attended in over the years, I have yet to see a bridge truck in the funeral procession. So the money does not go with you. Think about that. Somebody someday is going to be using the money you have now. So if you can and you will, help the needy and the less fortunate. That is how we do heavenly purpose for dirty lucre. Amen. Concerns, testaments, anything. Testimonies, anybody have anything they want to pray about this morning? That quiet crowd this morning. We do have a mighty long prayer list in our bulletins. <clears throat> we will lift all of them up. And while I'm on the subject of prayer requests here, if there's any changes to the prayer list, leave us know so we can adjust the prayer list here. But it doesn't matter if your name is on and you say, I don't need prayer. Everybody needs prayer. Every single person. So there's never a mistake on the prayer list. Anybody else have anything they want to pray about? I yes, think the coming stores in Japan and Taiwan, the tsunami, yes, absolutely. Another tsunami. Yep. Isn't this crazy weather this world is having? We have to remember the, um, it's hurricane season and the possible destruction that that can happen from the hurricanes that come. We have to remember our global our global warmth is happening. You know that that's it is getting warmer, and we see the polar ice caps melting quicker and quicker. So we need to pray and pray for what we have done to God's world. Man, God gave us a beautiful world. Look what man's doing to it. We can pray to have that restored because God can restore it if he just points at it. But we have to be true to God and pray and really be 
be sorrowful for what we have done to his world. We need to pray for the people of the Ukraine and anybody else who's in war. Especially for the citizens who didn't ask for the war. They're losing everything. We need to pray for them. Shall we go into prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, there is only one God. You are only one God. There is no other God before you. There is no other God beside you. And there is no other God to come after you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you give to us. And what little we do with it. Lord, we don't deserve all that you give, but you're such a loving Father that you give so much to us. Guide us in how we use it. Lord, we pray for those who may be in the way of a tsunami. You, Lord, could calm the storms. We pray for all the hurricanes during the hurricane season that were to form. Again, Lord, you could calm the storm. We don't understand why all the flooding and all the damage and destruction comes along with these storms. Other than it's a way to bring us together in your name to do your work for your people. Lord, we pray for all who are on our prayer list. You know their needs. You know what's going to be done. We especially pray for those who are sick today. May you lay your healing hand on them if it is your will. Heal them. Be with them. Let them know you are there and love them. Lord, we ask that you be with all those who are suffering this day, who are suffering from addiction, whether it be from alcoholism or whether it be from drug addiction, whatever the addiction is, Lord, you know and you can help. Help guide us on how we can help those who are suffering. Lord, we pray for those who are homeless, that have to worry each and every day where their next meal is coming from, where they're going to sleep that night. Be with them. Let them know you are there with them. And let us know how we can help and guide us and how we can help them. Lord, we pray for all those who are serving in the military, whether they are in harm's way or they are at home. Lay your hands on them, touch them, let them know you are with them. And let them know we are proud of them for serving. Lord, we ask that you can pray for our president and all who serve under him. We pray for our governors and all who serve under them. We pray for our mayors and our local school districts and all who serve in public service. Be with them. Guide them in their decisions, that they are the right decisions for your people. Let your will be done, not ours. Lord, we pray all these things, and now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
come to the time and the moment of commitment, our offering plate is in the front of the church. You may place your offering in that as you leave. If you are watching online, you may go to our website and donate on our website. Please stand for our dedication and thanksgiving. Together. Sources of every good gift. You call us to be wise to the true riches of their kingdom. May this offering show much wisdom that having been found faithful in the little, you will trust us to be faithful in much. We offer you these gifts of gratitude for your love, the favor and healing and light to those who need. Our next hymn, our last hymn is Jesus Calls Us, number 398. Thank you. 